Hello and welcome to Hotline 21 on CAN TV. My name is Keisha Larkins and I am the Associate Director at Connections for Abused Women and Their Children. So joining me today is Leah Renfro. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yes. Um, I, like Keisha said, I'm Leah Renfro and I am the Outreach Services Coordinator at CAWC. Okay, thank you for joining me today, Leah. Um, so glad to have everyone here to join us this evening for Hotline 21. Um, for about the next 25 minutes, Alia and I will be discussing domestic violence um, and also we'll be talking about some of the services that we have available at CAWC. Um, we definitely would like to invite everyone to call in to the show uh, with your questions um, or comments about domestic violence. For people who might be unfamiliar with CAWC, or again, Connections for Abused Women and Their Children, um, it's actually Chicago's oldest domestic violence agency. Uh, we have a few different types of programs. Uh, one of our programs is Greenhouse Shelter, uh, which is a 42-bed shelter, uh, which operates 24 hours a day and services adult and child victims of domestic violence. Um, we have our Hospital Crisis Intervention Project, uh, which is housed in both Northwestern Hospital and also at Stroger Hospital. Uh, CAWC also has our Humboldt Park Outreach Program, or HPOP, which is of course in the Humboldt Park neighborhood. Uh, that program is a walk-in program um, where any adult or child victim of domestic violence is welcome to walk in during our office hours, uh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and they would be connected directly with a counselor advocate. Um, we have domestic violence services at Haymarket Center, so um, we'll talk more about Haymarket Center, um, but we provide services there to um, some of the residents. And then finally, we have a community um, education and advocacy program. So just a reminder, today's show is an interactive call-in show. Um, I invite everyone watching to call us at 312. Uh, 738-1060. Um, if you have a question for either me or for Leah, um, if you or someone you know is in need of domestic violence services, CWC has a 24-hour hotline. So that 24-hour hotline is available anytime um, and you can call 773-278-4566 four five six six and when you call that number you would be connected to a trained uh, domestic violence advocate who would be able to pr provide assistance all right so leah i wanted to start out by talking a little bit about kind of what domestic violence is a lot of people ask um, like what is domestic violence sure how would you define domestic violence <clears throat> um so when I first started working at CAWC, I didn't realize just how broad of the, the term domestic violence is. A lot of times you think of the traditional image of physical abuse between a husband and a wife. Um, but domestic violence can be a lot more than that. Um, it's a combination of sexual abuse, verbal abuse, psychological abuse, um, sometimes physical abuse. Um, and it can be between any type of domestic partnership. So that's a man and or a husband and a wife, boyfriend and a girlfriend, a girlfriend and a girlfriend, or even um, instances of like a roommate situation mm -hmm. or an adult male and his um, his father. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's interesting that domestic violence really encompasses so many so many people and so many types of relationships and it's so much more than physical abuse. Yeah, no, I would definitely agree. I know some people do think of domestic violence and they do just think first of that physical abuse mm -hmm. and don't really realize all of the different um, things that could be domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, we know domestic violence is um, really just like a pattern of behaviors that a person uses to establish power and control over another person. Um, like you said, that person could be like a dating partner or a spouse, but just like you said, it could be <laughs> a family member, it could mm -hmm. be a roommate um, or another household member. Right. Um, so just to look a little bit at a definition of domestic violence, and I'll try to make that straight. <laughs> um, as I said, it is that power uh, or that pattern of coercive behaviors. Um, really, it's looking at ways to intimidate another person um, or to hold uh, power and control over that person. Um, abusers use so many different tactics. So physical abuse or physical assault is one type of domestic uh, violence. 
but um, other types of abuse could include emotional abuse, uh, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, um, or even financial abuse. Um, another thing that sometimes people um, don't really understand is that domestic violence doesn't just impact one type of socioeconomic group mm -hmm. um, or one type of couple. Um, sure. Any person can, can really just be a victim of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things we do at CWC is we do work with survivors who experience any type of domestic um, violence. Um, all of our programs are open to any survivors of domestic violence. Um, all right, so Leah, at CWC, like you said, you're the Outreach Services Coordinator. Right. Um, as the Outreach Services Coordinator, what are some of the programs that you work with? So currently I work with um, the Hospital Crisis Intervention Program, also known as HCIP. I also work with the Counselor Advocate at Haymarket Center. Um, and then I work with our legal advocates who are mainly at 555 West Harrison, which is the domestic violence courthouse. Okay. Um, I would love just to kind of talk a little bit more about each of the programs and sure. some of the services that we offer at mm -hmm. those programs. Um, maybe we sh we'll start with like with the hospital crisis intervention sure. project. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about that project and what that looks like? Yeah, so as Keisha said, the HCIP is housed at both Northwestern Hospital and Stroger. We have two counselor advocates on staff at both both sites. Um, what's great about HCIP is that our counselor advocates are in the building and so they're able to provide that bedside care when um, when a client requests that. Mm -hmm. Essentially we work with the entire hospital. Um, nurses can refer social workers, doctors, whomever, um, when they suspect that um, a patient um, has been a victim of domestic violence, they can call our counselor advocates and if that uh, patient would like to receive services or even just learn more information about resources or what their rights are, um, our counselor advocates can come down and talk to them, give them a little bit more information and obviously support um, at really a critical time um, mm -hmm. in their care and kind of in their journey. Um, and all of our services are confidential and free of charge. And at HCIP, we can also offer ongoing services. So we can give that um, bedside care right when, you know, they're admitted to the hospital, but then they can continue to come back to Stroger or Northwestern and receive ongoing counseling. Um, our, our advocates are also really great at providing different community resources mm -hmm. a lot of times. Um, our clients are faced with a, a bunch of different obstacles in addition to domestic violence, so they're very savvy on um, food pantries and child care and different, different supports that um, they might need. Um, so yeah, I suppose that's HCIP in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, and both of those programs have been around for, for a pretty long time. Um, I know HCIP Stroger started uh, first in 1992. Um, and it was kind of one of the first sort of programs of its kind. And Northwestern's a little bit newer. That one's been around since about uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really nice to hear that clients would be able to receive like that ongoing support and also um, receive those services right at that, that at bedside right. at that critical time when they're, right. you know, maybe in the trauma unit mm -hmm. or in, you know, if they might be hurt from, mm -hmm. from a physical incident. Right. And what's great about HCIP is once they're discharged from the hospital, their, our care, our connection with them doesn't have to end. They can continue to come back to our offices for that counseling. And like you said, those services are all free, so everyone mm -hmm. would be able to come for that. Very right. cool. Um, another thing that we do at HCAP, we do um, trainings for the doctors, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, what are some of the types of trainings that the staff at HCAP do for the doctors or the other medical staff? Sure. Um, so we really are about education at HCIP because um, domestic violence can sometimes be a difficult conversation to talk about and so we think it's really important to help social workers, doctors, residents, um, really any any hospital personnel that is in contact with patients, um, helping them understand how to screen, what to look for, but also how to ask those tough questions. A lot of times it, it can feel quite awkward to ask a patient if you know there's potential domestic violence um, happening and so we really want um, the medical staff to be comfortable and confident when asking those questions and know when to refer to us 
um, in an event of a domestic violence situation. We also um, can offer different trainings around, you know, DV 101, domestic violence and technology, um, different different things related to domestic violence that the hospital staff might be interested in. Okay. Um, one of the things you mentioned was screening. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important for the doctors or the hospital staff to know how to screen for domestic violence? Sure. Um, I'd say first and foremost they're kind of the first people that have interactions with them when they're, they might be at their most vulnerable um, state and also it's it's kind of an art form you want to ask the questions in a specific way that make the patient feel comfortable and also gives them space to um, disclose what might be going on sure. and um, a lot of times it's it's really not even um, asked in like a, a typical intake and so we really want to help the medical staff understand the importance of screening and how to ask those questions um, to give the patient the best care. Yeah, that, that is really important and I and like you said it's really it's really great that um, we have those counselors right on site mm -hmm. so if someone does say yes I do feel unsafe or I feel like I'm in a relationship that might be domestic violence, right. um, they would be able to connect directly to one of those mm -hmm. counselors that's there. Um, so if we did have someone who was um, like a, a patient of Northwestern or a patient of Stroger and they wanted to talk to a counselor from CAWC, mm -hmm. um, what's the best way for them to reach the counselor? Sure. Um, so all the medical staff um, should have our direct office line. So if, if they want their doctor or social worker to give us a call, they can certainly do so on, on their behalf. Um, they can also be provided with the number. Um, and if we're available in there that day, if they want, like I said, that bedside care, we're more than happy to, to go visit them wherever they're at in the hospital. Um, and our counselor advocates are on site eight to five. And so if in the event of someone needing immediate assistance um, after, after hours, they can call the 24-hour hotline. Um, and uh, like Keisha said before, a trained advocate will um, direct them in the, right, in the right way. And then, of course, they're always welcome to leave us a message if it's after hours and our counselor advocates will get back to them the next day. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so we always know that our, our tw CAWC's 24-hour hotline can connect someone to any of the any of the programs that we're talking about mm -hmm. today. So that's always a good av um, avenue. Right. Um, I also wanted to give another reminder that this is a call-in show. Um, mm -hmm. So please feel free to call 312-738-1060 um, if you do have questions for me or for Leah about domestic violence or about um, CAWC services. All right, so we talked a little bit about um, HCIP, or the mm -hmm. Hospital Crisis Intervention Project, which is at Stroger and at Northwestern. Um, another program that CAWC has is um, Domestic Violence Services at Haymarket Center. Mm -hmm. So what is Haymarket Center? Haymarket Center um, is one of Illinois' uh, largest substance abuse um substance abuse programs, and so they um, offer services, residential services, to both men and women. Um, they have everything from detox to residential to an IOP program as well, um, and so it's a really, really great resource for people struggling um, with addiction. Okay. Um, and so there we have staff who, we have a counselor or a coordinator who is there to provide um, domestic violence intervention as well as like education services, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I know one of the things that kind of makes that program at Haymarket unique is that um, the, the residents there are able to get those DV services um, or DV education or DV counseling at the same time that they're receiving that substance abuse right. um, treatment. Mm -hmm. So we know that DV um, and substance abuse are linked um, in many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, how do the staff from CAWC work with those residents mm -hmm. who are um, receiving substance abuse treatment um, right. at Haymarket as well? Right, yeah, unfortunately a lot of the um, residents at Haymarket have experienced or are experiencing domestic violence and so our um, coordinator, Courtney, is a wonderful counselor who provides um, individual counseling and then also group services. So each unit um, on the woman's side receives um, a domestic violence education group 
and there we'll talk about what domestic violence is. Like I said earlier, a lot of people don't realize that what's happening to them is categorized as DV, um, so that education piece is, is critical. But then she also provides groups related to healthy relationships and um, you know red flags, boundaries, what to look for, and then also how, of course, domestic violence can be kind of intertwined with addiction. Okay. Um, let's see, and you also provide those groups at, at Haymarket as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah, I work with the, the lovely women on um, the WIT unit that stands for Women's Integrated Treatment. Um, so women on that unit um, have a co-occurring substance abuse um, problem and also a, a mental illness. So it's really great to be able to work with those women who are struggling in kind of different, different areas. Mm -hmm. And it's so important, uh, like what you said, that both you and Courtney, when you're working with those women, you're talking not only about domestic violence, but also what a healthy relationship mm -hmm. looks like. Because sometimes that's um, maybe information that people don't have. Definitely, definitely. I know like tomorrow at my group, we're doing the five love languages. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done that before with a different group and they get really excited because we're talking about something positive, you yeah. know, all day. They're in treatment for, you know, something that's, that's negative and they really like to learn about the positive side of relationships and also kind of what what they can offer to a, a partner. Yeah, and it's a good way to sort of look look towards what like future relationships could look like. Definitely. And, and look at what a positive and healthy relationship could look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's one more program that you work with, right? Yes. <laughs> so the other program that you work with, um, those would be our legal advocates. Right. Um, so um, what are some of the types of things that the legal advocates mm -hmm. at CWC help? clients with? Sure. So um, our two legal advocates are um, kind of housed at the domestic violence courthouse and they work with a lot of walk-in clients. Mm -hmm. um, they see a lot of folks who are coming in to get an order of protection and from there their case kind of starts. So our legal advocates really can just support them throughout the entire process from filling out the paperwork to obtain an OP to giving them, you know, that, that support while they're in front of the judge. Um, if there's any criminal cases involved, they'll be there to support them through that. Um, and what I think is really great about our legal advocacy program is um, the legal system is very confusing to, mm -hmm. to, you know, the average person if you don't have much background in it and they're already in a vulnerable situation requesting an OP or, you know, involved in a domestic violence relationship. So our legal, to have our legal advocates mm -hmm. there to kind of be that, that expert and to provide that support and know that they're just there to help them through the process, I think is, it must be very comforting to, to those clients. Right. I know um, one of our legal advocates told me um, a little bit about a client that she was working with. I saw the client um, at our, the legal advocates, I know that you said they're based at uh, 555 West Harrison, mm -hmm. but they also have an office space um, in our Humboldt Park program. So I saw a client that they were, that one of our legal advocates was working with and she told me a little bit about the case. Um, she said that she had been working with that client for almost two years. Um, and so she started working with that client pretty, like shortly after that client left her abuser. Mm -hmm. So she left with her young son. Um, and after she left, um, the abuse, um, which during the relationship was um, mostly physical abuse, mm -hmm. after she left, um, the, the abuser started um, trying, like sort of stalking her and continuing to intimidate her. Um, the abuser would show up at their house, at the child's school, at her work. Mm -hmm. um, and so she heard about CWC's program and she came in and kind of met with the legal advocate and the legal advocate went with her like to every single court case. And she mm -hmm. said those court cases lasted for like several years. Mm -hmm. um, they also linked her to um, domestic violence, uh, the domestic violence legal clinic. Okay. So our our um, legal advocates, they, they are super well versed in like the Illinois Domestic Violence Act, mm -hmm. um, but they are not lawyers. Um, so they're not able to like represent someone right. in a case. Um, but we do have partnerships with um, places like the Domestic Violence Legal Clinic where we can sometimes mm -hmm. help connect a client to um, either a free or very, very low cost attorney who can help support them with their case. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case that um, that legal advocate was telling me about, um, they were able to successfully um, 
mandate for the abuser to receive uh, partner abuse intervention um, services. Um, the client was able to get full custody of her child. Mm -hmm. She was able to get an order of protection. Um, and both she and her child um, received counseling services. That's wonderful. So yeah, another thing like with our legal advocates, they, they focus on that, the, the legal mm -hmm. support that a person would need. But we can still kind of tie them back to some of our other programs. Right. So at our Humboldt Park Outreach Program, we have individual counseling. We have group counseling. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyone who's receiving services can can always come and join in on those things as well. Right. All right. Um, so talking about the legal advocates, just kind of wrapping that up, um, how um, would someone get in touch with one of our legal advocates if they needed help with an order of protection or something like that? Definitely. Um, so obviously if they're at the courthouse, um, they could, you know, go into that main office and um, ask to speak with one of them. But um, if they're kind of a step before being physically at the courthouse, they can reach them in a couple ways. They can either call our HPOP number, um, that's our Humboldt Park Outreach Program. As Keisha said, that's where um, their, their offices are. Um, or again, calling that 24-hour hotline. Um, those, those advocates can um, guide you to any CAWC service provider um, and really help you with next steps. Um, and again, especially if it's perhaps after hours, they're a great resource to have um, to kind of tell you where to go next. All right, so we just have a few minutes left, um, but if there is anyone that does have questions, you do still have a few minutes to call in. Um, the number to call in to ask questions is 312-738-1060. Um, so for just the last few minutes, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the counselors and the people who are providing the services. Mm -hmm. So as your role in out as Outreach Services Coordinator, you do supervise many of the counselors who provide some of those direct service work mm -hmm. um, with their clients. And that has to be pretty pretty difficult um, you know, to have to hear those different difficult stories and sort of take all of that in. Um, I know a lot of time people ask me when they hear the type of work I do, they ask me about like burnout. Like, Right. Do people burn out mm -hmm. really easily in that field? Um, so if you were talking to someone who kind of wanted to get into domestic violence advocacy, um, what type of advice would you give them about, you know, to kind of help avoid burnout? Sure. Um, well, I think first and foremost, I would say education, just because um, before I started, the you know, I knew I didn't know as much about domestic violence as there is to know. Um, so that's really important, just so you're um, you're educated and you kind of know what you're diving into. Um, and then other things, I think, having a sounding board, um, whether that be a really supportive supervisor or um, a mentor, a therapist, having someone, obviously not breaking confidentiality, but having someone to talk to about kind of how you're processing things and, and what you're feeling is, is really important. Um, some other things, you know, we talk about a lot about self-care. Mm -hmm. um, it, really, it really does work and it is a true thing, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether that be exercise or meditation, it could be something like, you know, meeting um, your book club once a week, mm -hmm. just anything to kind of get your, get your mind out of, um, out of the work or the volunteer stuff um, and, and be able to recharge. Yeah. I think it's also important to remember that we, anyone, you know, volunteering or working in the field of DV, we're, we're advocates, um, but we really believe in, in choice-based and so, um, our vi the victims or our clients are the expert and so we can help them um, along the way and give them those resources but we don't need to take that on ourselves because um, they're the experts in their own life and they mm -hmm. need to make those choices. Yeah, that's a really good good point. Um, so yeah, so you talked about self-care. What, mm -hmm. what are some other things that you can do for self-care? Sure, I mean self-care, the, the nice thing about it is it can really be anything that kind of brings you joy and you know charges you up. Um, I like to go running. I also just like to spend time with my family. Yeah. I know other people enjoy like reading books, um, utilizing your vacation days. That's important. <laughs> um, something I'm good at. Utilizing that PTO um, because we all need time to like step back and recharge. Okay. 
Very good. Well, we are coming down to our, our last uh, few moments here on Hotline 21 for the day. Um, thank you again, Leah, so much for joining me. Yes. Um, it was great to talk to you and, and learn mm -hmm. more about those services and those programs. Mm -hmm. um, one more time, just before we leave, I wanted to give CAWC's 24-hour hotline. Um, so anyone who ever needs domestic violence support can call 773 278 Four five six six, and they would be connected directly to a trained counselor advocate. Um, again, my name is Keisha, um, and this is Leah, and we're from CAWC. Uh, thank you so much.